We managed to pick a few suspects up off the street based off the description you gave us earlier. Tall, male, dark clothing. Right. Well, if we've got him here, we'll make sure he pays for this. Blake, send him in. Well, that was an unusual lineup. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're also going to be taking a look at a different type of lineup relating to woodworking tools. So let's not waste any time and start taking a look at these items. So if you've been following this channel for any period of time, you know that I'm always on the hunt for affordable woodworking tools. And I do this through a process which I call Googling Deep which is me staying up way too late, and instead of Googling old friends and girlfriends, I stay up to Google affordable tools. Which is pretty lame now that I think about it, but that's where I'm at in my life. Le who, the her. But for today's video, I uncovered an entire lineup of tools from a brand which I had never heard of, which is kind of rare for this channel. So let's not waste any more time and take a look at these four tools that I got from this unknown brand. So first off, you're probably wondering what the heck is this brand? Well, it's a brand called Going Make, and this is indeed a Chinese brand. Son of a bitch. And I know I've done a lot of bashing on ordering from Chinese websites, and I still stand behind that. This brand, however, is only available on Amazon.com. And there's a real difference between ordering from US-based websites like Amazon and some of these Chinese-based websites like Temu and Banggood. If you're interested in some of the details that I experienced, check out this video here. So let's get into it and check out our first Going Make tool. So our first tool of the day is the Going Make 3D Miter Square. Let's unbox this and see what it's all about. So if we open the box, you can see the packaging is very nice, and it does come with instructions, which is something that I didn't find with Temu and Banggood. If we look at the tool itself, you can see that it comes with a square along with an angling pin, and we'll show you what this does in just a moment. So let's take a closer look at some of the physical markings on the square to see what it can do. So if we look at the side profile, you can see that it looks like any other small speed square, but when we rest it on this 4x4, you can see that it has the extra lip. Now this lip is a quarter of an inch thick and it runs down the entire length of the square. If we look at the side of the square, you can see there's a little rail that rests against the side of your workpiece. There's also markings on the very edge of this so that you can measure down from the very top of your workpiece. If we look at the top of the square, you can see there's markings running down the entire length of the four inch lip. There's also angle markings running down the entire 45 degree rail. If we look at the side, you can see there's 16th of an inch increments running down the entire length with little scribe holes where you can place your pencil. Before I do anything else, I want to test this tool for Square. Since I've never worked with this brand before, I don't know about their quality control. And to do this, I'll use my trusty Woodpecker 642. I'll place this new square on the interior of the Woodpeckers and then I'll shine a light behind the two squares. And I see no light shining in between the two squares in that gap. So now that I've confirmed that this is square, I'm much more confident about using this tool. Now let's talk about this little pin that came with the square. So if you remember the side rail of this tool, this is where it will come in handy with this square. If we slide the tool to the left, we can slide that pin into any one of the predetermined angles, in this case 45, and then strike a line at 45 degrees. And if we look at the top of the tool, you can see there's a hole for 67 and a half, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 22 and a half degrees. So this is a pretty cool little tool, especially for its size. This reminds me a lot of those DFM squares which I anticipate reviewing on a future video. If I had any complaints about the design of this tool, it would be with this side rail, as I don't anticipate using this rail for any of my woodworking. If this was removed, you could fit this in your pocket, but with this rail in place, it's hard to put this in your apron. The last thing that I'll say about this square is I'm really liking these black tools with the white writing. That's racist. They're much more easy to read than many of these more expensive tools like woodpeckers. Well, so far so good with this new Going Make brand. Let's check out the second tool I got, see how it stacks up. So our next tool of the day is the Going Make shelf pin jig. Let's check this one out. So one thing that I'll have to say that's really refreshing after reviewing a lot of Timu and Banggood products is the packaging on these items is really nice. Ah, oh, that's refreshing. In fact, this one comes with its own hard shell carrying case. Not only that, but we're also getting instructions in English with pictures. So inside the hard shell case, you're going to be getting the shelf pin jig itself, 
along with a couple of drill bits, a pin, an Allen key, and then a collar for those drill bits. So right off the bat, one of the first things I noticed about this jig was its black coloring with white writing. This makes it extremely easy to read. Now let's take a closer look at some of the physical components of this jig. So the nice thing about this jig is it gives you a lot of flexibility. If we look at the very bottom, you can see there's three holes, and these are on each side of the jig. These are for pins, which are located on the very back, which will rest up right against the edge of your cabinet. This will allow you to determine the depth of where you're gonna set your shelf pins. But there's even a little bit more adjustability than just setting those pins on the back. Let me show you. If we take a look at the jig again, you can see that you can not only adjust the pins on the back, but you can also adjust the collars. You simply unscrew them and screw them into the secondary spot. So now that we've taken a look at the flexibility of this tool, I now wanna show you some of the alignment features. So if we take a look at the jig again, you can see there's little notches running down the entire length of the jig, and these directly correlate to wherever your shelf pins will be. So if you line it up to wherever you wanna start your shelf pins, you can begin drilling. But there's also two other alignment features. Let's take a look at those. And these alignment holes are located right here and right here. As you can see from the two little hash marks, this will line up directly with where your pins will be. If we look at the bottom, this will line up with exactly where the edge of your cabinet will be. Now everything appears to be great and of high quality, but one thing I've learned about working with any Chinese tools is you need to test them to see if they actually work. We don't have that in America. So let's test this out and drill a line of shelf pins. Now unfortunately, I don't have any shelf pins, but we will be able to test this jig. The first thing that you wanna do is to set the collar of the drill bit. And this is done by setting the drill bit into one of the holes and locking the collar so that the drill bit is sticking out to the same depth as the length of your shelf pin. Now that I have my drill bit set and locked, we can begin to drill out our holes. Now that we've drilled out our first hole, we can use the included pin to give us support as we drill out those other holes. Now that we have all seven of our holes drilled, we can easily move our jig up the length of our workpiece simply by moving that pin. All we have to do is remove the pin, place the jig in the new position, and put the pin back in, and we can continue with our drilling. And just like that, we have a nice clean set of shelf pin holes ready for those shelf pins. Now I'm pretty pleased with how well this going make shelf pin jig has performed. Now I've dealt with one other shelf pin jig in the past and that's the Craig shelf pin jig and this works just as well. But the nice thing about this jig as compared to the Craig jig which is made out of plastic, this thing is made entirely out of aluminum. And the other nice thing about this tool is its hard shell case. Since this is something that you're not gonna be using every single day, it's nice to have all your tools stored in one place in a safe location. Well, I have to admit, I'm pretty pleased with this tool lineup from Going Make so far. The quality seems to be there and the tools are functioning as they should. As a reminder, I'm gonna be leaving links to all the tools we're gonna to be taking a look at today. So you can go check out these tools for yourself in the description. Before we move on to our third of four items on this new brand of tools, I ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Now let's go check out our third item. So our third item is another jig, but this time it's for the table saw. This is the Going Make Thin Rip Jig. Let's go check it out. So once again, we have some stellar packaging here. Nice. Along with some included instructions. Let's dig into this tool and I'll show you how it works. So one of the nice things about this jig is it can accommodate a 3 8 inch miter slot as well as a 3 quarter inch miter slot. So depending on what size miter slot your table saw has, this thing should be able to handle it. Don't even trip, I'm gonna handle this. So let's take a look at what comes inside the box. Obviously you have the jig itself, but you also get a couple of Allen keys as well as a couple of T-bolts that are used for the 3 8 inch miter slots. So obviously this is a pretty simple little jig. Once again, everything is black with white lettering so it's very easy to read. But there's a couple of features with this tool that I haven't seen on any other thin rip jig. The first feature is this can accommodate both imperial as well as metric. And if we look at the base of this tool, you can see there's a little area here that you can calibrate this tool with the included Allen wrench. 
and the Imperial can handle increments as low as 1 16th of an inch. If we take a look again at the top of the tool, you'll notice that there's three knobs. The two black knobs are what secure this in place in the miter slot. The third knob, which is a brass knob, allows you to easily adjust this tool back and forth to get your desired measurements. So obviously this tool functions very similarly to any other thin rip jig, but there is one feature that I have never seen in any other thin rip jig that I've ever owned. And this is a feature that my boy Birdman would be very pleased with, as this tool essentially has an incorporated feather board. Lead if we look at the very tip of this tool, you'll see there's a little bearing, and this bearing only moves in one direction, and that's forward. If we pull back on the bearing, it will provide resistance, essentially assisting in preventing kickback. And that's a really nice feature to incorporate just a little bit of safety into a jig that many might consider just a little bit sketch. But just like with any other tool, let's fire up the table saw and see if this thing actually works. So obviously, as a reminder, this jig is meant to be placed in front of the table saw blade. If you were to place the jig after the table saw blade, you can almost guarantee you're going to get some kickback. And I've got that jig locked down and set up for quarter inch strips, so I'm just gonna use an old piece of plywood and we'll rip down some quarter inch strips. And just like that, I was able to cut out four very consistent strips at a quarter of an inch with ease and repeatability, which is exactly what you're looking for in the performance of any thin rip jig. It should also be noted that you can easily push it forward and you can also feel that resistance of the bearing when you try to move it backwards. So in my book, we have another winner here from Going Make. But as I said before, we have four items to take a look at, and that was only three. So let's go check out our last item. So our last item of the day is the Going Make Bench Dog Clamp. Let's check this out and see how it stacks up. So once again, we're dealing with some premium packaging. Nice. Along with some detailed instructions. Inside the box, you'll find two bench dog clamps. So let's dig into this and see how it works. So it should be noted before we dig into this tool that these clamps are made for three quarter inch bench dogs. And what I have in my shop right now is a Festool MFT. And these have 20 millimeter bench dog holes. So these won't exactly fit. However, I will show you the functionality of these clamps. So here are the two clamps. You can see I have an unassembled clamp as well as an assembled clamp. To use the clamp, you simply slide it into the bench dog hole and then you slide the clamp right on top of that knob. Then you can tighten it down with a brass screw on the side. Now, obviously with mine, you'll see a lot of play, and that's because of the 20 millimeter bench dog holes. With a three quarter inch bench dog hole, this will sit completely flush and very tightly. Point. One of the nicest features about these clamps is their flexibility and their extendable range. Whether you're dealing with thinner stock or thicker stock, these clamps can handle it. At its widest point, these clamps can handle material as thick as three and three eighths of an inch wide. And one of the nicest things about these clamps is the quick on-the-fly flexibility by twisting the bronze knob to loosen it and then twisting it tight again. Another feature that's quite unique to these clamps is where you can place your jaws. There's actually two placement holes for the jaws on each clamp. By simply unscrewing the pad on the clamp, you can move the jaw from the exterior point to the interior point, which is a little bit closer to the base of the bench dog. And this can give you just a little bit more flexibility if you're dealing with smaller stock. And if we compare the difference between this clamp being set at the wider setting and this clamp being set at the thinner setting, you can see that that small change can make a big difference. Now, just like with the other Going Make tools that we've taken a look at today, all the critical components of those clamps is made out of metal, which is great because you know it's gonna stand up to a lot of force. Well, that's the last item that we're going to be taking a look at today on this new lineup of tools made by Going Make. I think the thing that impressed me the most today was that every single tool that we took a look at today functioned as advertised. And that's something that you just don't see in many of these Chinese tool manufacturers. But these tools did even more than that. Every single one of the tools we took a look at today had an extra feature that many of their competitors just don't have. Whether it's the adjustable width on these dog hold clamps, the locking bearing on the thin rip jig, or the adjustable angle finding pin on this square, each one of these tools had its own unique feature that I hadn't seen in other tools. 
Well, thanks for joining me today on checking out this new lineup of tools made by Going Make. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Only 9% of the people that watch this video actually subscribe. Also, leave a like and leave a comment as it really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.